live from Austin, Texas. It's the Cube, covering KubeCon and Cloud Native Con 2017. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Linux Foundation, and the Cube's ecosystem partners. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage. We are live in Austin, Texas for Cloud Native Con and KubeCon, not to be confused with Cube, because we don't have a KubeCon yet, C-U-B-E. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman, next is Aaron Dadgar, who's the founder and CTO of HashiCorp. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for coming on. So we interviewed your, your, uh, your partner in crime, Mitchell, years ago, and we were riffing in our studio in Palo Alto, and Essentially, we laid out microservices and all the stuff that's being worked on today. So congratulations, <laughs> you guys were right in your bet. It's, uh, you know, it's funny to see how the reaction has changed over the last few years. Back then it used to be we'd go in, it's like, people are like, did you get a catch load of the crazy people who came in and talked about microservices and immutable and cloud? It's like, get out of here. Yeah. And now it's, uh, it's funny to be you know, here at KubeCon and it's well, like. Well, those fun days back then was the purest and DevOps, and I say purest, I mean people who were really cutting their teeth into the new methodology, the new way to, to develop, the new way to kind of roll out scale a lot of the challenges involved. Certainly now it's gone mainstream. Yeah. You're seeing no doubt about it. I just came back from reInvent from AWS, Lambda, serverless. You got application developers that just don't want to deal with any infrastructure. That's infrastructure as code in the DevOps ethos. And then you got a lot of people still in the infrastructure plumbing and app plumbing world right. who actually care about all this stuff, <laughs> provisioning. So how are you guys fitting into the new landscape? Are you guys riding along? You guys were, were you guys first ones paddling out to these waves? What's this, what, how do you guys at HashiCorp look at all this growth? So the way we think about it is, there, you know, I think there's a lot of market confusion right now just because there's so much happening. And I mean, even just being here, it's like almost overwhelming to just like understand what exactly is this market landscape evolving to? And the way we're thinking about it is, there's really these four discrete layers with the four different people that are involved in tech, right? We have on one side we have our IT operators that are just trying to get a handle around how do I provision things in Amazon and now I have business groups coming and saying okay I want to provision in Google Cloud and Azure, how do I really do that in a way that I don't lose my sanity? You have your security people who are saying I've lost my network perimeter, now what? Like how do I think about secret management and app identity and like this brave new world of cloud? You have your app developers who are like I don't care about any of that, just give me a platform where I can push deploy and out, out the gate it goes and you deal with it. Uh, and then you have you know, the, the folks that are kind of making it all plug together and work, the networking backbone, who's saying, okay, before it was F5 and Juniper and Cisco, what does it mean for me as I'm going cloud? So the way we're sort of seeing ourselves involved in all of this is, you know, how do we help operators sort of get a handle around sort of the provisioning side with things like Terraform? How do we help the security folks with tools like Vault? How do we complement things like Kubernetes at the runtime layer or provide our solution with Nomad? And then you know, on the networking side, how do we provide a consistent service discovery experience with console. So and you that's guys, are, how we you guys are really in. just now just kind of riding in with everybody else, kind of welcoming everyone to the party, if you will. <laughs> um, what's the big surprise for you as you guys, you know, it's not new to you guys, but as you see it evolving, what's jumping out at you? I mean, we're hearing service mesh, pluggable architectures. What are some of the things that, that's popping out of the woodwork that you're excited about? Honestly, the thing I'm excited about is the excitement about infrastructure, right? I mean, when we started, four or five years ago, you know, it was an ice cold market. You'd go and talk to people like, let's talk about how you're doing provisioning or your deployment or how your developers push things. And people were like, oh, do we really have to? Like, let me get a coffee. And now it's like the opposite. It's like people are so excited to talk about the infrastructure, the bits and bytes of it. And I think that for us is probably the most exciting thing. So whether you come here and it's like the vibe is electric, right? Like you guys can attest to it. It's, it's crazy yeah. to see the growth of it. And so what's exciting for us is now these conversations are being lit up all across industry. Yeah. So whether you're talking about, hey, how do I provision a thing on cloud to what's a scheduler and how does that help me, there is this tremendous interest in it. Yeah, Ar Armand, what, take us inside. You, you talked about, you know, used to be kind of, we, we've been talking, is infrastructure boring? Uh, you know, what is that change that's <laughs> happening in customers? Has it just reached a certain maturity level that now, you know, the business, they need to move faster and therefore, you know, I need to adopt, uh, you know, these kind of architectures? What are you seeing when you're talking to customers? Yeah, I think the, the sort of the, we heard that the sort of uh, the line a few times is it's becoming boring, but I think what, you know, in some sense that's the goal, right? All of these tools, all of infrastructure is plumbing at the end of the day, right? Like, at the end of the day, the applications of the end users is really what should be sort of the exciting bit. And so, 
it's our responsibility sort of as the vendors here in the, the community working on infrastructure to make this stuff boring. And I think, you know, in that case, what we really mean is it should be so reliable, so well documented, you know, you know so scalable that it's brain dead to operate these things. Um, and I think, you know, step one is let's get people excited about what's the state of the possible, what's the art of the possible in terms of what do I get in terms of business agility of adopting this stuff? Once people started adopting it, let's make it boring for them. Let's make them sure they don't regret it and that they actually see those benefits. Well, it's reliable too. Boring equals reliability. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, um, it's interesting. I, when, I, when I you walk through kind of the provision, secure, connect, and run, it reminded me a little bit about Hen talking in the keynote this morning about kind of the stack uh, that they, they see Kubernetes playing. Totally. Um, you know, there, there are some people that probably look, well, HashiCorp, you guys, you have a platform, you've got some of these projects, you know, is that, you know, what's compatible, what's replaceable, you know, what, what, what's the connection right. uh, between what, what you're doing and, and what's happening in this space? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, I think a lot of people are like, is it odd for HashiCorp to be here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think it kind of goes back to our lens on this market, which is, we want to provide tools that are sort of discrete in each of these categories, and we fully know that customers are not going to go all in on HashiCorp and say, I want all four layers, right? A lot of our customers are Kubernetes users. And so for us, the mission is, okay, great, how do we make sure Terraform plays nice with Kubernetes? How do we make sure Vault yeah. plays nice? So I actually have a session in about an hour and a half here uh, talking about Vault integration with Kubernetes. Uh, and then you know, we have a developer advocate talking about using uh, console with Kubernetes as well. So for us, it's really a play nice story. How yeah. do we make all it's of this? It's a rising work tide together? floats all boats. Market. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is what's happening. You guys are, are actors in the, in the ecosystem, and it's not a land grab. No one can own the stack. No. That's the whole point of this whole ecosystem, isn't it? It's so big, right? This market that we're talking about is so enormous, right? It's every organization writing software. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so give us the update on HashiCorp. What's going on? What's the latest and greatest? You guys are hot startup. We, we interviewed you guys about, I think, three years ago, maybe four. Can you remember now at this point? It seems like a, a blur. Yeah, I mean, so last, you know, Two months ago was our big HashiConf, our user conference. And for us, the focus has really been saying, okay, we've got our initial set of open source tools out on the market in 2015. And we said, okay, let's take a pause. There's already so many tools. Let's just focus on how do we make the practitioners successful with each of these things and really go deep on all of them. And so with things like Terraform, we've been partnering with all the various cloud providers, right? So say, how do we have first class support for Azure and Google Cloud and Amazon and make sure that you know, as you're adopting these clouds, Terraform meets you there. And then with things like Vault, it's how do we integrate with every platform companies want to be at. So if you're using yeah. Kubernetes, how do we make sure Vault meets you there yeah. uh, and integrates? So for us, that's been the focus is staying sort of focused on the six core tools and saying how do we make sure they're staying up to date as yeah. technology moves and sort of deepening Yeah, because your users are going to be leveraging a lot of the new stuff. They're going to be, Kubernetes has certainly been great. What's your take on Kubernetes? If you can just take a minute to just, I mean, not new, this notion of runtime and orchestration. We, we talked about it with Mitchell uh, in our session years ago. We didn't actually say Kubernetes wasn't around then, but we talked about you know, the middle, middleware of the cloud. We, that was our kind of discussion, and that was essentially called PaaS at the time, but now right. no one talks about PaaS and platform as a service anymore. It's all kind of one. Right, right. What, what's your take on Kubernetes? How, how do you feel about it? What, what is it to you? Right, yeah, I think that's a, so I think twofold. I think what's exciting for me about it is it reminds me of, in some sense, like what Docker did for the industry, which if we went to, you know, sort of the pre-Docker world, nobody talked about immutable artifact-based deploys. It was like this esoteric thing, and then all of a sudden, overnight, Docker made it popular. Where it was like, oh yeah, of course, everything should be immutable and, and artifact-based. And then when you look at what Kubernetes has done, it's built on that momentum to say, okay, that was step one. Step two is to say, you really should think about all your machines as this sort of shared pool of resources and move the abstraction up to the application, to the service. And think about, I'm deploying a service, I'm not deploying a set of VMs. And so it, it's been this sort of tidal shift in how IT thinks about deploying and delivering an application. It's, it's actually should be focused on the service, focused on sort of abstracting away the machine and that's super exciting. And what do you think the benefits will be with the impact of the marketplace? Faster development, I mean, what's some of the impact that you see coming out of this to go to the next level? Yeah, I mean, the impact for me is really saying, when we look at these approaches, in some sense they're not new. If you look at what Google's been doing since early 2000s with Borg, what Amazon's been doing, what Facebook's been doing internally, these big tech companies have showed, if you're able to move up the abstraction and provide this higher level utility to developers, you can support tens of thousands of services, innovate much more quickly, and for a while that was sort of trapped in these big tech companies. And I think what Kubernetes is really doing is 
bringing that to everybody else and saying, actually, adopting the same strategy lets yeah. you have that, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a maturization of open source of this generation. You look at what Lyft, Uber doing, look at the open tracing, for instance, pretty interesting stuff because, I mean, they had to build their own stuff. Right. At scale, massive right. scale, not like, you know, hundreds of thousands of services, millions of transactions a second. Right. I mean, that's daunting. That's daunting. Or, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so your take on open source. Okay, because now we're seeing a new generation of developers coming online. I've been saying it's been a, a renaissance is coming. More of an artisan, art, art, a craft, coming back to craftsmanship of coding. Not like UX design side, it's talking about craft and code. So you got a new, younger generation coming up. They don't even know what a load balancer is. Right. But they're happy not to deal with it, as you said. <laughs> and then you've got open source growing exponentially. Jim Zemlin at the Linux Foundation was saying, you know, 10% of the IP it's going to be unique to the company. Right. The rest is going to be that sandwich of open source. Right. That's exponential growth. Yeah, right. You get exponential growth, new wave of software developers, you're a young gun, what's, the, what's your view of the future? I, I mean, it's funny, because it's, like, you know, it's like that first derivative is going exponential, the second derivative is going exponential. You know, I think we're going to see more and more innovation at the Ultimately, what it's really about is delivering at the end application layer, right? Like, we're all here to be plumbing, right? And so the better we can be at being plumbing, the better the application developers can be at delivering innovation there. And so, I totally agree that the trend is going to go 90-10, right? And I think that was partly one of the reasons we started HashiCorp. Because we'd look around and we're like, it's insane that you have 30 to 50% of these companies doing platform engineering that's completely undifferentiated from anyone else. It's like you're deploying on the same vSphere VM as your competitor, but you're rebuilding the whole platform. It's crazy, it's like you should use an open source tool and focus on the application and not how to boot a vSphere yeah. instance. I mean, the impact costs so, and time. Ar 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 yeah. Armand, you know, one of the things you know, we, we, we talk about, the, the only thing constant in this industry is that the pace of change keeps increasing. <laughs> How are you dealing internally? How are customers doing it? You know, I think back two years, like a year and a half ago, I talked to a guy who's like, who's like, oh, you know, Vagrant is like my favorite thing I've been <laughs> using ever. Now I talk to lots of customers that are, you know, Vault is you know, critical to their stack that they're doing. Um, you know, you know, HashiCorp looks very different now than they did two years ago. How, how's that pace of change happening internally and with customers? Totally, and I think part of what we've done is actually since 2015, we haven't really introduced brand new products because our feeling is that it's becoming so confusing for the end users to really navigate this landscape. So in, in 2015, we thought the landscape was confusing. Today, it's like, you know, you know multiply by 100 so We were at thousand. Amazon last week, we understand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, honestly, I think that is, when you look around here, I think that's one of the challenges we're facing as an industry is I go and meet with customers who are like, Every time I refresh Hacker News, there's 50 new things I need to go evaluate. <laughs> it's like, I don't know where to even begin. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, as a vendor, I have a hard time keeping up with the space. So it's like, you know, I, I empathize with the end user who, you know, it's not their full-time job to do that. So, you know, our goal has been to say, how do we better distill at least the HashiCorp universe in terms of, hey, here's how our pieces fit together and here's how we relate to everything else in the ecosystem and kind of give our end users a map of, okay, what tools play nice, how do these things sort of work together, uh, but I think as a bigger industry we have a bit of an issue around the sheer amount of sort of innovation and how do we curate that uh, and really make it more accessible. All right, I got to ask you a personal question. Obviously you guys are entrepreneurs, doing a great job, been following you guys, congratulations by the way. Thank um, you. What are you most proud of as you look back uh, and what do you uh, wish you could do over? If you can get a mulligan and say, okay, I want to do that differently. Um, how much time do we have, by the way? <laughs> oh, 10 seconds. I'm going to ask you the parachute question next. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, I think the thing we're most proud of might be Terraform. I think it's fun to see sort of the level of you know, ubiquity and the standardization that's taking place around it. Uh, the thing I wish we could take back is you know, probably our auto project. I think uh, you know, the scope was so big for that thing and I think our, uh, you know, our eyes were probably a little wider than they should have been uh, <laughs> on that one, so I wish we had sort of probably not committed to yeah, it Yeah, you rein it in, you know, catch the mistakes early. Okay, final <laughs> question for you. You're, uh, you're a large customer and, um, you're, and, and the plane is going down, you have 10 seconds to pick a parachute. Amazon, Azure, or Google, which one do you grab? Oof, Go. Uh, you know, probably Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever gets fired for choosing Amazon. <laughs> all right, well Jeff Frick on our Cube team said, I'd take all three and call it multi-cloud. <laughs> um, That's thanks, the right answer. Thanks for coming on, appreciate it. Congratulations on your success at HashiCorp. My pleasure, thanks so much for having me. Got HashiCorp here on the Cube, CTO and co-founder in the Cube, riding the wave, cloud native, Kubernetes, 
A lot of great stuff happening, microservices and containers. It's theCUBE doing our part here at KubeCon. We'll be right back with more live coverage after this short break.